this beam. So a very good evening boys and girls and welcome to the dicky dark cliff tops of Flamborough Head. Now ever since I was a small child something that's always fascinated me is the night sky and that's what we're going to take a photograph of this evening and the particular patch of night sky that we're going to aim for is Cassiopeia and of course the Andromeda Galaxy. Now I am no astrophotographer my gear is not geared up towards astrophotography and the biggest problem I'm going to have is the lens. My Olympus 12 to 40 f 2.8 Pro, it's not going to get us a very zoomed in picture of the Andromeda Galaxy. I'm going for more of a wide field kind of field of view. Let's get stuck in and see what kind of photograph we can take using a micro four thirds camera and a cheap little star tracker on a tripod. So before we start taking photographs, first of all, we have to build the star tracker. Now this that I'm throwing in here, it's basically, it's a really big laser pointer and it's gonna allow me, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it'll allow me to point at the North Star and I can get this thing aligned. It's just going to clip onto the top of my tripod, hopefully nice and easy, just like so. So we'll swizzle around. Let's find the North Star and at least get polar aligned. Then we can start having a go at taking these astro photos. This will be fun. So good news, the tripod is now polar aligned. I know that because the really bright green laser pointer is pointing directly at the North Star. I'm kind of wondering if you may be able to see this over my uh, shoulder here but it's really intense it may not come through on the video but when you're actually here looking at it well you can really tell that it's pointing at polaris so now all i have to do is turn the motor on point it to the n so now it's going to counteract air spinning rip and it will keep the thing pointing at the thing that we're pointing it at which is going to be andromeda as soon as i manage to swizzle around to the second ball head there was so many ball heads let's do that so now we have to loosen this off now, messing up the tripod's alignment, uh, we're kind of going to be pointing in that direction, so we need to swing this around, so that's going to face upwards like, so. there we go, there we go, do a little bit that way, so now I can plonk a camera on here, and hopefully it'll keep pointing in the right direction, so let's do that bit, let's throw a camera on here. And start taking some pictures. Okie dokie, so the camera is now on the tripod, and my camera has a mode called Starry Sky AF. So it's in that mode. If I turn the autofocus on, well, the camera's now going to automatically focus on the stars for me, which really takes a lot of the trial and the error out of this kind of thing. Because anybody that's ever done this before, well, there we go. So in theory, we're there. But if you've ever tried to do it before, what a faff it can be. An absolute faff. So everything now is ready to go. So the tripod is set up, the star tracker is polar aligned and it is tracking across the sky in the direction it's supposed to be, I hope, because this is going to be the first time that I've used this for any real length of time. The focal length is set in, I'm down at 40 millimeters on the lens. I've zoomed right in. It's the only thing on any of the test shots I've taken that gives Andromeda any sort of size in the photograph. We may be able to crop in a little bit more later on but we'll just see how things turn out i'm at f 2.8 60 second exposures and iso 1600 i'm tempted to up the iso or stop but i think we'll just leave it where it is for now the final image is going to be image stacked so noise is going to be a non-issue really but i think 1600 is probably a good starting point for a first time attempting this so the only thing really left to do is start taking photographs of andromeda and the more you get the better the photograph that you're going to end up with. So how long this is going to take, I don't know. Let's just see. Okay, so at the moment I've taken 20 minutes worth of images on the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, what is meant by taking 20 minutes worth of images? Well, every image that I'm taking is 60 seconds and I've taken 20 of them. So 20 minutes in total. And as far as I understand when it comes to astrophotography, the number of hours the more hours you take, doesn't necessarily have to be in one session, I'm led to believe, but the more hours and the more minutes that you get on one single object and stack them all together, the better the final photograph is going to be. Now, to put this into perspective, when I dabbled with this many, many years ago with lenses that were nowhere near as fast and a camera that was not tracked, the most I got was about 10 minutes and I was able to get something quite reasonable out of that, untracked with a very slow lens. So I'm hoping by now, I've got something that is quite nice looking. So I'm gonna take a few more photographs. I'm gonna take maybe another 20 images or so, and then we'll just see how we're getting on. 
But I can tell you that the Star Tracker is doing an absolutely fantastic job at keeping everything where it needs to be. Every single frame I've been through, the Andromeda Galaxy has not moved, and there are no star trails visible either. A lot of shooting stars, but no star trails. That's always a good thing. All right, so we're at about 25 minutes now, and it's just started to cloud over a little bit. So I'm thinking this may be about all she wrote for the light frames. And I'm flicking through there, and you can see there's a lot of meteors flying about. And when we get towards these ones, you can just see a little bit of banding where some cloud is now starting to blow across. So that's going to be it for the light frames. Now, I'm led to believe that what we need to do next is throw a lens cap on the front of the lens and take what are called dark frames, which are the same shooting settings but these are used to cancel out noise, or so I'm led to believe. So if I can find a lens cap now, let's pop that on the front of the camera. There we go, so no light gets in. Same shooting settings, and we're just gonna take a stack of 10 of these, which I will throw into the stack when I get home on the computer. So the camera is currently taking a stack of dark frames, like I've just said. So I think it's time to end this video and probably show you the final photograph. Now, this is the first time I've really attempted anything like this with this setup, so it's probably not going to be the best photograph of Andromeda that you've ever seen, but it's probably certainly going to be the best photograph of Andromeda that I've ever taken. So before I show you that, I guess I'm just going to say my usual spiel about likes and subscribes and pieces and goodbyes and all that. So, here's the photograph.